Antibiotics really have been one of the most important enabling technologies in the biomedical enterprise. So they are the cornerstone of many of the subsequent more complex biomedical things that happen like invasive surgeries, transplantation. The foundation of being able to do those things are antibiotics. The original antibiotics were introduced, discovered in the 1920s or so, begun to be used broadly in about the 1940s, and yet we maintain now here, 2015, we only have an com incomplete understanding of how these antibiotics work. We set out to look at antibiotic combinations and how, in some cases, those can be antagonistic. And we found are that two of the major classes of antibiotics, those that kill bacteria and those that simply stop growth, really result in fundamentally different changes in the cell, and that those changes are sort of the underpinning aspect of their antagonism. In this paper, we really wanted to get a better understanding of how do the different class of antibiotics exert their influence on bacteria. And we specifically looked at two classes of antibiotics, bactericidal, those that kill, and bactericidic, those that inhibit growth of bacteria. So we found that drugs that are classically bactericidal accelerate respiration. Uh, and that bacteriostatic drugs, stopping cell growth, uh, inhibit or slow down cellular respiration. The combination of those drugs is dominated by the bacteriostatic partner, so the overall outcome is the inhibition of cellular respiration. Our findings, I think, provide clinical insight and even clinical guidance for the design of effective combination therapies for antibiotics. It's been known for decades that if you combine a specific bacteriostatic antibiotic with a cytal antibiotic, you don't get killing. But it wasn't appreciated that this really is a general phenomenon. So as we begin to think about how you could treat, very difficult to treat, bacterial infections, our work would indicate that if your intent is to kill the infection, you better not include a bacteriostatic antibiotic as part of that combination. We intend to move forward on really now trying to better understand how do you go from the interaction of the antibiotic with its target inside the cell to this impact on respiration. So why does a cytal antibiotic lead to a ramp up in respiration? Why does a static antibiotic lead to an inhibition of respiration? We think that that effort will actually help point to new targets and new ways to boost the effectiveness of existing antibiotics. We can now apply genomic techniques and systems level techniques to piece together at the level of the cell of what is happening and why these antibiotics are working the way they're working. And I think that these are the physiologic metrics that are underpinning some of the biggest problems we have in infectious disease, the development of resistance, the return of recalcitrant infections, and generally speaking, how we use antibiotics.